Whether crypto advanced or unspeakably new, Bitcoin.com has a wallet for you. So, is he or isn't he? That's the question folks are finally asking out in the open, or at least out in the open enough for me to have finally heard of it. Is Chris Cantwell a, fed a federal agent provocateur or informant or employee of some kind? Now, the truth is, I haven't been asking the question either, because I've felt that the way to deal with that guy is to give him no publicity at all, for the most part. Now, for those of you who've been hiding under a, an, an FLK panzer for the last two months, Cantwell is the New Hampshire-based white supremacist who went to Charlottesville to do a bunch of white supremacist stuff. Well, I don't know about white supremacist. He's a white nationalist, at least. Whether we like the guy or not, we should take the hue doubting approach as we look at him. Doubting was uh, a big wig in the RAF during the Battle of Britain, and he was, I think he's the one I'm thinking about. He was known for uh, what we call icy logic. And he was so icy about this logic that he would use it to, he would protect Germans with it sometimes. He used to say, those guys who are you are shooting down, you do not shoot them in their parachutes because they're legitimate. They're not legitimate targets anymore because they're about to become prisoners. However, if you get shot down over Germany, expect to be targeted in your parachute, and it's no big deal because you're a legitimate target while you're in your parachute because you haven't given up fighting yet. Well, in the same way, we, same way we should try to apply IC logic to uh, Cantwell. Uh, I'm just going to tell you what I've seen and what I've heard him do, and what he is reported to have done by sources that I trust. Some of it backs up the theory that he's a federal agent, and some of it belies that theory. You should just hear everything I know. Cantwell, as you know, associated with Free Staters during the 2012 era until, I guess it would have been around 2015, when he was increasingly ostracized by them. The first time I ever learned that he existed was when I was at a Liberty Forum, and I found myself just desperate to leave this room as fast as I could, because he was the speaker. Right? He was like, I mean, not an official speaker, but like he was giving some kind of a comedy act in a side room of some kind. I couldn't get, a, I couldn't get distance from that place fast enough. He was so unfunny and obnoxious, just like what some people say I am. But anyway, uh, that would have been around 2012. Then uh, there was this... There was this, uh, I guess it must have been six months later, it must have been the 2012 Porkfest, where the security people there had to go on this really unusual sort of high alert. And why? Well, because Chris Cantwell was driving around drunk. Then there was his more obnoxious than everyone else behavior during the early Robin Hood days. So he would f uh, follow meter maids meter readers, and uh, just say more obnoxious things to them than anyone else would. It was just this, it's this pattern toward the beginning of him doing, you know, or like taking on kind of the demeanor and some of the actions that you would take on if you wanted to make liberty activists look bad. Then there's this issue with him doing the classic thing that federal agent provocateurs do, and that is advocating for violence of some kind against the authorities. He did that from the beginning. So that's plenty of red flags right there. If a Jean provocateur hunting is what you do, it's kind of not what I do. Because, again, the reason Federals use those, and uh, the reason they use confidential informants, is partly to turn activists against each other, spending all their time trying to figure out who the Fed is or whatnot. And I don't really want to jump through their hoops that they've set up for us. Uh, so another uh, another characteristic we would look for would be uh, the the um, the suspect, the person suspected of being an informant, sort of seeming to get away with things that other people don't get away with. You know, uh, achieving a little bit of Teflon status. So the first indication we see that this might have happened is uh, I guess it would have been a roughly late 2015 incident where Chris pulled a firearm 
on some people at Central Square. The only activist I can think of who's ever done that, in anger anyway, and uh, you know, this was in Keene, and he, uh, you know, there's a video of it, and the video does seem to make clear that Cantwell has legal grounds to, to, to pull the firearm, but there have been, there's so many cases in New Hampshire where people pull a firearm and much they're much more justified in pulling it than he was, and they get they get thrown in jail. Cantwell was not arrested on the spot or later. The police just, it's like they immediately, oh, no problem. <laughs> yeah, you pulled a firearm, no big deal. Uh, he was being threatened. He had legal grounds to do it, but you still, it was just shocking to see the police behave so well. On the other hand, the fact that they behaved so well from the beginning, I, I, I doubt that the Keene Police Department would know what, Chris Cantwell's status was if he was a federal informant, especially the ones that just first pulled up on the scene. So their sort of spontaneous um, good treatment of Cantwell, uh, the spontaneity lends credibility to it. So take that as being, who knows? It wasn't, it was not the ring endorsement of (laughs) CI status that it could have been. Ian Freeman, the host of Free Talk Live, who where Cantwell used to be a co-host when he was pretending to be, or maybe he was, a liberty-oriented person, Freeman says he does not think Cantwell is a federal informant or any kind of informant. But, he says, looking from the outside, you, 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 you could see how he would, he would appear like one from the outside. But... Ian knows him a lot better than hardly than almost all of us do, since almost all of us have been trying to avoid the guy most of most of the time that we've known he existed. But in the process of defending, I mean, I think that I think, I think Ian's statement should be taken seriously, and I do take it with a few grains of salt. If Ian thinks he's not an informant, to me that that is definitely worth considering Ian's opinion. But in in, in expressing that opinion, Ian said something. That made me suspect Cantwell more than I did <laughs> before, and that was this: uh, he, right after the federal government raided FTL Studios, Free Talk Live, on suspicion that someone had used the FTL uh, Wi-Fi to access a child porn site. Well, uh, apparently Cantwell just appears right out of the blue, right after that raid, and oh, here's some equipment to get you going again. Now, that's not an indicator that Cantwell is a non-federal informant, that he's not an informant. That's an indicator that he is an informant. That's the exact kind of thing that you would expect informants to do. This is what happened to Ed and Elaine Brown. Uh, They weren't informants, but they were federal undercovers who uh, sort of, you know, after the feds cleared out all the partiers, you know, they wouldn't let people come to the Browns to be friends with them or to party with them or to hang out with them or to sleep there overnight. They blocked the place off. But some people kind of made it through anyhow. Oh, yeah, we we were able to get through here. In your time of need, here we are. Well, those are the federal agents that arrested them. They were pretending to be friends with pizza at first. Now, Ian has been a friend to Chris Cantwell, uh, and maybe that was Cantwell's motivation. It's, that's believable, too. And if the authorities had wanted to make Cantwell into a poster child for how bad libertarians or former libertarians or people connected with libertarians are, well, they would have done something more than this. They wouldn't have just made him unpopular. They would have had him blow something up. If you look at the way this has played out so far, Cantwell's misbehavior has barely, it's barely has even been used against the free staters at this point. If you, if you Google Cantwell free state, it barely, none of the headlines even mention the free state project. You have to dig down into some of the detailed material to even find the free state bunch mentioned. Uh, Washington is not super competent, but it could probably make us look worse than it has with Cantwell, if that was what they were trying to do. Maybe they will later. I think one thing is to watch is to see, well, does Cantwell get 
unexpectedly lenient treatment for his two felony convictions from from the Charleston events. Sorry, not convictions, uh, charges. If he does, then okay. Now that that's an indicator that he's still a threat, and that uh, he, something else may happen with him, and that he's working for the feds. But if he's locked away for five or ten years and hardly anyone ever hears from him again, <sighs> either Washington's playing a really long game or he is what he appears to be. There's, a, there's another indicator to me that he may not be working for the feds, and that is that in my experience with federal informants, and I believe I have had some, <laughs> um, the, the ones who I am pretty sure were federal informants, they... The thing that, that sort of, that there's a way they talk that just, it doesn't sound spontaneous. There's something that's just not, it doesn't, they don't sound genuine, right? They, like, uh, Chris Cantwell might be a liar, or he might not be a liar, but he has what I call the Trump effect, right? So Trump, Trump lies a lot, but he sounds spontaneous and a little bit genuine, Cantwell probably lies a lot less than than Trump. In fact, I don't think I've ever caught Cantwell in a lie. But it, when he talks, it sounds very spontaneous and genuine. Whatever he's saying, it doesn't sound like he's acting. I mean, I, I probably only talked with the guy in person twice in my life, uh, and, uh, but I've listened to him for probably at least 20 hours worth of Free Talk Live shows where he's a co-host, right? And he, there is just nothing, there is nothing about his demeanor or his uh, conversation that sounds canned or rehearsed or I'm following orders. It's, it's all v very spontaneous and sounds very genuine. Uh, so that's a, that's a big indicator he's not working for D.C., I would love to be able to say that he is working for them, because that would make them look bad. But the uh, the indicators are just mixed. Oh, there is one last indicator to mention, which I think vaguely leans him toward being, yes, more likely a federal informant, and that is that I I tried to I tried to interview him on the Ridley Report. I wanted to question him about some concerns I had about his uh, certain certain statements of his, and he refused to be interviewed. Uh, that behavior did not seem consistent to me. I mean, it was not consistent with. Chris Cantwell's public persona as a person who seeks publicity. Uh, that was in 2015, and at that point I added him to my ambush interview list. The plan was to inter ambush interview him the next time I saw him in public property, but I never saw him again. And, and I went on Free Talk, that live, uh, Free Talk Live that night to condemn him. Or at least raise concerns about his statements. And I think this had to do with statements he had made, and I don't remember what they were now. Uh, that was the last time I ever spoke of him uh, in public, and uh, like I said, I never saw him again after that. Good F-bombing riddance. Why does the world look like this? Well, it's because you're using these instead of these. Admittedly, so am I sometimes. But if you're not using Bitcoin yet, you're missing the boom of the century. So. Go to Bitcoin.com, get their free wallet, find out what it's like to be in a free market. Whether crypto advanced or unspeakably new, Bitcoin.com has a wallet for you.